I think at the point that you see the mega banks in the United States start to custody Bitcoin, the third leg of the stool will be put in place. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, the treasurer of Microsoft could wake up in the morning and say, I think we should buy some Bitcoin. The CFO would say, OK, well, I guess the accounting looks fine. The lawyers, the general counsel would say, oh, well, the SECs endorsed this and there's 34 companies that have 70, 34 ETFs with $70 billion of Bitcoin. So I guess it's a legitimate asset. Mm -hmm. And then the treasurer could say, OK, to the person at Citibank or JP Morgan, buy us a billion dollars, put down the phone. Earlier this year, while speaking at the Bitcoin Atlantis conference in Madeira and then at Bitcoin Prague in June, MicroStrategy founder and executive chairman Michael Saylor proudly declared that Bitcoin had entered a decade-long gold rush era. He believes this period, marked by multi-trillion dollar firms like Microsoft and Apple investing in the leading digital asset to avoid fiat debasement, began in January when the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission approved several spot Bitcoin ETFs. This approval gave thousands of institutional investors access to the largest cryptocurrency by market cap, and Saylor predicts this era will last until 2034, with hedge funds, pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, nation states, and companies like MicroStrategy directly buying Bitcoin or investing through these ETFs. Saylor points to the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs as a game changer, marking a significant shift in the regulatory landscape for cryptocurrency. The SEC's green light was a crucial step in dispelling misconceptions about Bitcoin being merely magic internet money or a money laundering scheme. The interest of major Wall Street players like Fidelity and BlackRock further cements Bitcoin's position, indicating that it is not a passing trend but a long-term investment opportunity. Saylor believes that the final piece of the puzzle will fall into place when regulators allow banks to custody Bitcoin, making it easier for all categories of investors to invest in the cryptocurrency. In a recent interview with Bitcoin News, Saylor discussed some exceedingly bullish predictions for Bitcoin, including his ultra-bullish $100 trillion market cap prediction for the leading cryptocurrency. He believes that once banks can legally custody Bitcoin, it will rapidly begin to assume its true value, eventually reaching a market cap worth hundreds of trillions of dollars. This optimistic outlook underscores Saylor's confidence in Bitcoin's potential to revolutionize the financial landscape during this gold rush era. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. Are you surprised that it's taken public companies so long to begin to adopt this Bitcoin treasury strategy? I guess I'm a little bit surprised. Uh... But because yeah, once you get Bitcoin and it clicks in your mind, you immediate reaction is, oh, I got to hurry and buy as much as I can because someone else is going to go take all my Bitcoin away from me. <laughs> so I, like in 2020, when I started buying Bitcoin, I was thinking, go, oh, no, I got to do this in a hurry oh, because God. someone's going to figure it out and the price is going to 10x and I better get it before it 10x. Mm. So, I mean, that's a natural reaction when it finally clicks in your head because you're thinking, why, like, why wouldn't? every billionaire in the world go and buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin, smash buy it overnight, mm -hmm. and just to make a billion, because why wouldn't they just want to make the billion dollars? Or five, you know, yeah. five billion or 10 billion or in, any amount of money. I mean, Bitcoin, it, it feels like in the early days, the infinite money glitch, right? Mm. But the practical case is the world is, uh, the world falls into conventional patterns and conventional behaviors and ceremony and ritual. And um, there are a lot of forces of conservatism that cause institutions and companies to move slower. Mm. So for example, um, in the last four years, one question is, will Bitcoin be embraced by the regulators? Mm. And that wasn't really clearly answered until January of 20. 24. Mm -hmm. So when the United States SEC approved the Bitcoin spot ETFs, that was a major endorsement that this is not tulip bulbs, this is not a scam, mm -hmm. this is a legitimate institutional digital asset mm -hmm. and digital commodity. So that was a very important point. Uh, another thing uh, that had to happen why, uh, for corporate adoption is um, fair value accounting. If you bought a million dollars of Apple stock and it doubled, you would have a million dollar investment gain. But if you bought a million dollars of Bitcoin under the previous indefinite and tangible accounting and it doubled, you would probably be showing a loss 
Mm. So a CFO that's indifferent, if, I, if they said, well, wait, I can buy this, and if it doubles, I'll make money. And if I buy that and it doubles, it'll look like I lost money. Mm. That was, uh, I would say, prejudicial, hostile accounting. And that only just changed this year. Mm. And then the third thing that is required for institutional adoption in a big way is for the banking system of the world to start custodying Bitcoin, mm. right? If, if I'm Google and I generate a billion dollars a month or maybe a billion a week, some weeks, mm. I, can, I have no problem wiring that money to JP Morgan or Citigroup and saying buy government T-bills. And uh, a junior employee at Google does that wire transfer and it's routine like this. But if I wanted to buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin, mm. I can't wire the money to JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs or Bank of America or Wells Fargo. I have to go find a, a new relationship. I have to set up a new vendor. A lot of times these companies had the same bank for 20 years, 30 years. Mm. You know, now Citibank used to be National City Bank. Mm. National City Bank was the Rockefeller Bank. It was John D. Rockefeller's bank. Mm. Right? It's not unlikely that the oil companies have been doing business with the same bank for 100 years. Right. So, mm -hmm. so um, when we did it, we did it before those things. Right now, what we've seen is, is uh, the ETFs have been uh, an important, uh, important green check in this process. The accounting changes have been an, a second green check. The Financial Accounting Standards Board rule change is a much anticipated victory for Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency and digital assets industry. With this new rule, the board now allows companies that hold Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on their balance sheets to use fair value accounting principles when reporting their crypto asset holdings. Previously, the board classified Bitcoin as an indefinite intangible asset, treating it as a risky and exotic asset, which deterred corporations from purchasing it. According to MicroStrategy founder and former chief executive officer Michael Saylor, this classification made it challenging for many chief financial officers to adequately allocate to the leading crypto asset despite its numerous superior qualities. Fortunately, the rule change now permits corporations to report gains and losses on their crypto holdings as investment gains and losses, separate from their operating results. This change enables company executives to invest in Bitcoin without worrying about its volatility affecting their core business operations. Saylor is convinced that this rule change will encourage many more corporations and institutional investors to seize the opportunity over the next decade to buy Bitcoin before its price potentially skyrockets. Here are more clips from the interview discussing these developments. I think at the point that you see the mega banks in the United States start to custody Bitcoin, the third leg of the stool will be put in place. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, the treasurer of Microsoft could wake up in the morning and say, I think we should buy some Bitcoin. The CFO would say, OK, well, I guess the accounting looks fine. The lawyers, the general counsel would say, Oh, well, the SEC's endorsed this, and there's 34 companies that have 70, 34 ETFs with $70 billion of Bitcoin, so I guess it's a legitimate asset. Mm -hmm. And then the treasurer could say, okay, to the person at Citibank or JP Morgan, buy us a billion dollars, put down the phone. Mm -hmm. And it's just very stress-free, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're not quite there. What? And that's the negative. It'll probably be another year or two years before we work through the banking issue. It's clear that it's going to happen, but it'll take a bit of time. And, uh, and meanwhile, the opportunity is for these companies you named to get a leg up. Mm. And if you're the first mover, it's just like someone that bought Bitcoin in 2013 had to do a lot of work. Mm. Or 2017. <laughs> so you have to do more work, but you get paid. And what I used to say to people is, look, when it's not controversial and it's easy, right, um, everybody will want it, right? Mm -hmm. no, nobody will make fun of you for buying it, but you won't be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. right? like, mm -hmm. like you'll be able to buy 1% of what you could buy now. So when it gets easy, you'll have to pay up for the convenience of it or... You can, uh, you can work a bit harder right now and, and the marketplace will give you a discount. The years from 2024 to 2034 
for digital money is, are, are the real high growth Ooh. disruptive years and the year from 2024 to 2034 for digital intelligence, probably the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. but, this is the decade of digital capital. And, the, mm -hmm. and I use the word capital because money, sometimes people think, well, is that the currency or is that the store? Is it the medium exchange or the store of value? I would say the real disruptive change right now is Bitcoin will emerge as the store of value, mm -hmm. digital capital. And what's that worth? Hundreds of trillions of dollars is mm -hmm. what it's worth. It's worth a lot. And that's a very that's a very hard, hard driving trend. You realize now institutions, corporations are moving in size that is an order of magnitude and two orders of magnitude greater than was going on before. Mm. That's going to continue aggressively for the next decade. Mm. And, and that is the Bitcoin gold rush. I mean, the reason that's the gold rush is because by 2035, 99% of the Bitcoin will have been mined. Mm. So right now is the time when you've got natural sellers. You've got 450 Bitcoin available a day to buy mm. from someone that might want to sell it to you. Right. And when that supply gets cut off, the only way you're going to get Bitcoin is to take the price up and get it from an unwilling seller mm -hmm. by bribing them with a high price increase. Mm -hmm. So so this is uh, this is the gold rush for Bitcoin because you've got the institutional endorsement, you've got the regulatory endorsement, you've got the banks clamoring to get in. Some are already getting in. Mm. The news this week was the largest bank in Brazil. In fact, the largest bank in South America is Bank Itaú, mm. has announced that their customers can buy, sell, and custody Bitcoin mm. with the bank. Mm. Imagine if JP Morgan said, hey, all of our customers can buy, sell, and custody Bitcoin with our bank. Well, that's what happened in Brazil. In other news, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission approved nine spot Ethereum ETF applications on Monday, marking another significant milestone for the cryptocurrency industry as it continues to integrate into mainstream finance. Celebrating the development, Coinbase tweeted that spot ETH ETFs offer investors access to a unique crypto asset with distinct return characteristics. The Ethereum ecosystem is thriving, with over 15 million monthly active addresses and a 300% growth in smart contracts deployed in 2023. On the same day, U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF saw substantial interest, with 533,577 Bitcoin valued at $22.3 billion. Fidelity's FBTC alone holds about 68,313 Bitcoin, currently worth $12 billion. Both Ethereum and Bitcoin prices are expected to rise even higher this week as more institutional investors enter the market. Please share your thoughts, comments, and observations in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.